What up, fam? This is Night God, bringing you the most raw theories and hypotheses on ancient civilizations and folklore. Challenging what you thought you knew every post. If you keep an open mind, it might change your life. So do me a solid, smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and hit that bell to receive notifications for every time I post. Prepare to have your mind blown. So last week, my buddy came over who collects rocks, and he had this crystal. He claimed he found it a long time ago by Lake Michigan and that he keeps it on him at all times because it gives him good luck, it gives him good aura. I thought, cool, so it kind of fascinated me and I looked it up later that night. It ended up me being up half the night reading about a civilization I never knew existed that used these crystals to store information. It was an ancient civilization of higher beings known as the Lemurians. It is thought that the Lemurians lived at the same time as Atlanteans. In 1864, Phillips Clater hypothesized another landmass must exist. Due to lemurs being found in Madagascar and India, but not Africa or Middle East, experts believe the lost land of Lemuria was the first continent in the Pacific. It is said that Lemurians were the first galactic beings to set foot on Mother Earth, and their technology was much more advanced than anything we have now. So these crystals supposedly come from these Lemurian beings. Lemurians are considered beings of pure love and light. It is said they vibrate at the highest frequency considered the keepers of Earth. So there's a couple different theories on how everything went down, but I'm going to choose what resonated with me. So I'm going to cover the antediluvian conflict between Atlanteans and Lemurians and its role in the Third Galactic War. First off, antediluvian means before the biblical flood. So this is a perceived world map of Atlantis and Mu, which is also Lemuria, Mu just meaning Mother Earth. Atlantis, Lemuria. The conflict between these two higher civilizations caused great damage to not only Mother Earth, but it negatively affected all habitability throughout the solar system. It led to the death of Mars, and is probably considered the most disastrous war in all of the universe's history. The lemurian atlantean War was caused by a conflict of interest over lesser beings in the solar system. The Atlanteans wanted to dominate them and so-called guide them to their salvation, while Lemurians believed they should be left alone to evolve at their own pace. Lemurians taught oneness. Atlanteans started ego. So before I get back to the war, I'm going to teach you a little bit about what Lemurians and Atlanteans believed. The basic beliefs of Lemurians were beliefs in a higher power, love and respect for each other and love and respect for the earth and that these qualities are the basic foundation for spirituality this was the spirituality of the ancients and this is the spirituality that's going to awake within all of you it is said as Lemurian memory is activated within each of you it won't necessarily come in the form of information but rather it'll take form of your own individual spirituality and inner wisdom today people call this awakening to the fifth dimension some call it God consciousness these were originally the teachings of Atlantis as well until they fell to the ego by the fallen angels. Ego, of which we know today as being full of oneself, actually stands for easing God out. This is when they began thinking about enslaving lesser beings, which ultimately led to the war with Lemuria. Lemurians pre-war effort to spread the word. So in my previous video I told you that Lemurians vibrated at the highest frequency. Here's what I mean by that. Think of it as the Earth's pulse. It's measured in Schumann frequency. To put it simply, it's the electromagnetic pulses the Earth naturally creates, and it can be affected by things like lightning. When it says 7.83 Hertz, that means 7.83 times around the Earth in one second. And to no surprise, we humans vibe at this exact same frequency from 7 to 8. Things like love have also been quantified at 528 Hertz. And a lady named Rose, when she does yoga, vibes at 320 Hertz. This is really high for a human. It's because of this, the Lemurians knew the apocalypse was coming. They knew this two to 3,000 years in advance, which may seem like a lot, but not to them, because they lived almost 30,000 years. So during this two to 3,000 year span, they prepared. They sent out shamans to spread the word all over the world. They believed if preached enough, they could literally ingrain their teachings in our DNA. The war breaks out. So while spreading the word, Lemurians were also building large structures above and underground to protect their teachings. As master architects, they built beautiful underground cities and subterranean pockets, and they did this all over the world. While above ground, they used large massive stones to build these triangle-like structures. I wonder what those could be. They supposedly did this to preserve some of their tech. In fact, since Google Earth, there has been pyramids discovered all over the world, even in Antarctica, many of which we still haven't navigated all the chambers. It is believed that some might hold the technology that is key to human life. Then, in around the year 2600 BC, it happened. Atlanteans attacked. This was within 100 years of Noah's Ark. But it wasn't the Lemurians, because they were smart enough not to destroy their own planet at this point. So they attacked Mars moons using thermonuclear weapons. 
So Atlanteans just sent a nuke up to Mars' moons. Atlantean superweapon known as NARA-1, does that sound familiar? Was deployed to Mars resulting in the destruction of Phobos and Diemos. This was weird because Martians were actually Atlantean allies, but they wanted to enslave them. They were showing that whether the Lemurians liked it or not, they were going to do what they wanted to do. The results were catastrophic. The Martian magnetosphere destabilized, putting holes in the ozone. This allowed for poisonous solar radiation to reach the planet's surface. This completely stripped away Mars' atmosphere and caused the boiling away of Mars' seas. Not long after, as a retaliation, Lemurians sent nukes up to Martian enclaves, which were actually a part of the Atlantean Empire at the time. This caused the glassing of the entire planet, resulting in loss of all water, forcing Martians underground where they still are today. The Apocalypse of Mother Earth Previously, as a show of power, the Atlantean Empire and Lemurian Republic What does this remind you of, folks? Atlantean Empire, Lemurian Republic, planet-killing weapons? Where do you think George Lucas got these ideas from? Hmm... They sent nukes to Mars, killing the planet, forcing the Martians to underground hibernation chambers where they remained until the late 20th century. Modern day human exploration led to the rediscovery of the chambers and the Martians inside. All right, back to Earth. After the destruction of Mars, Atlanteans and Lemurians took their fight back to Mother Earth and began destroying their own planet. The first wave of nuclear strikes were at each other's territories causing some areas of the globe to be completely glassed over, turning these territories into nothing but sand. This includes the Sahara and Arabian deserts which were lush jungles at one time. Then came intense nuclear winters like gravitational explosion and fault line detonation. As the mini ice age got worse, the war hastened due to escalated fighting between the two factions over the last few territories left. This is when the two sides did the unthinkable, starting with Atlanteans. Atlanteans deployed mist-nuclear devices in the dozens to the Mariana Trench. You can see here it's just southeast of Japan. Here's Hawaii. Then Atlanteans detonated the high-yield nuclear bombs. The explosion caused massive downward compressions and tectonic waves traveling at the speed of sound, which in turn triggered magnitude 12 and 13 earthquakes all along the Pacific Rim. This also caused much of Lemuria to sink. Then in quick retaliation, Lemurians set off NAR-1. Atlantean superweapon. After the Lemurians detonated NARA-1, it caused the Earth to become very unstable. This was because the blast caused omnidirectional gravitational waves to rip through the Earth's and the Moon's core, wreaking havoc on our interior. With the destabilization of the Earth's interior, disaster loomed even closer because of the shift in the Earth's magnetic axis. Geomagnetic North Pole moves almost 30 degrees from its original intersection point in Greenland to here which is where it's at today. While all this was taking place the moon was so hot from the gravitational waves it was glowing red. These results are why NARA-1 is considered so devastating. Massive earthquakes, mega tsunamis, and super volcanoes put the nails in the coffin on the apocalypse. During the chaos most of the Atlanteans and the remaining Lemurians left the planet while humans began building arcs. After Lemurians and Atlanteans set off nukes that caused massive earthquakes, super volcanoes, and mega tsunamis, they fleed the earth knowing all well what was coming. Seeing this, God grew concerned, so he guided the humans to what land was left and told them to begin building arcs. With God's help and the scarce amount of tech that remained on earth, this is what they came up with. The Noah's Ark of Space. This ark would be a technological marvel today. It had bodies of water, lush vegetation, and even seeds for humans to plant and thrive. So the animals and insects that couldn't get on the ark, they put their embryos in incubation chambers and preserved them for future repopulation. To some this may seem far-fetched, but Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, actually is building prototypes of an ark right now. Once every human and animal was on that could fit, they flew up to space where they remained in orbit. This is where they'd stay while the debris from Mars' moons hit Earth. After fleeing Earth, Atlanteans ended up finding a planet that could sustain life called Gia. Lemurians, I couldn't find any proof that they did flee the planet, but I did find proof that they are here in Mount Shasta, living in the mountain in a city named Telos. We'll get to Mount Shasta here in a minute though. Once they got everything and everybody on the ark, the remaining humans, along with non-human species such as giants, fairies, elves, and dragons folks, yes you heard me right, friggin dragons.
They all flee to Agartha. Many know this as Hollow Earth. A lot more people than you'd expect actually believe this theory and they say it houses creatures as old as dinosaurs. David Burt, a general in the US Navy, was actually said to discover this in 1947. He described a lush climate with mammoth-like creatures and an ancient human race. This is the legend of Mount Shasta and the city of Telos. For decades now, people of Mount Shasta, California have claimed that a highly advanced ancient civilization lives in the mountain known as Lemurians. And this is their story. Around 25,000 years ago, the Atlanteans who lived in Atlantis, the Lemurians from Lemuria, broke out into an all-out nuclear war over differing ideologies. See, the Atlanteans wanted to take over lesser civilizations and enslave them. But the Lemurians, who are peace-loving beings of light, said they should be left alone to evolve on their own. The result, the thermonuclear war that ravaged our planet. When the super nuke Nara 1 went off, it caused massive earthquakes on the Richter scale of up to 15. These massive shifts in the Earth's tectonic plates caused super volcanoes and mega tsunamis that wiped out civilizations and species across the planet. Once the cataclysm started, the fighting stopped. They realized what they had done, but it was too late. After the nuclear war, Atlanteans and Lemurians realized they became victims of their own aggressions. As each of their land lay in ruins, they would eventually sink. Lemurians first. Atlantis would follow suit almost 200 years later. This is when both tribes approached Sambala the Lesser and asked to be a part of the Agartha network. They did this knowing they only had a couple thousand years until the Great Flood. This network consisted of 120 underground cities that had been in the making for almost 100,000 years. Following the loss of the continent called Hyperborea, which means Land of the Giants, where races stood sometimes 20 to 30 feet tall. They vacated Hyperborea because the Earth lost its mantle as a result of the First Galactic War. This caused the Earth to be polluted with radioactive waves, the likes of which she would never seen before. So in order to survive, they moved underground as species have since the beginning of time. Millions inhabit it today. Shortly after the fighting between the Atlanteans and Lemurians stopped, their homelands gave way, sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Due to this, each party wasted no time in petitioning to join the Agartha Network. But before they could join Inner Earth and its people, they had to pass just one test. Basically, they had to show that they had learned from the war and learned from the oppression caused by it. They had to convince the head council of this, which contained one member from each species tribe. The number of different civilizations down there was vast, from giants to elves, even gray aliens, fairies, and though they were very few, there was tribes of ancient mankind. And after heavy debates, Lemurians and Lantians were allowed in the Agartha network. Upon approval, Lemurians and Lantians began work immediately. The Lemurians chose in Mount Shasta for the destination of their great city of Telos. The antediluvian war theory and the evidence to support it. Antediluvian meaning before the biblical flood. It's basically a theory stating that a nuclear war happened between two or higher beings on earth causing the biblical floods. And here's some evidence to support it. A few years back in 2016, mysterious subatomic particles started spewing up from the Antarctic shelf. These particles are called neutrinos and they're elusive subatomic particles created in a wide variety of nuclear processes. They're trying to blame it on radioactive chlorine from the 50s, but I ain't buying. I believe it could be the results of a nuclear war that happened pre-Noah's Ark. Basically, warming of the Arctic shelf is releasing remnants of the war. This war that caused nuclear fallout and the Ice Age. But they've also found proof of the ancient atomic war in India, and it explains Libyan desert glass. Well, there is evidence to support these claims, which doesn't necessarily mean they're true. End of the day, nobody really knows. This is just another theory. Things that either the Egyptians were way more advanced than we thought they were, or, hear me out here, aliens. Ding, 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 ding. What's the surprise, folks? Knowledge. Yes, the ancient Egyptians absolutely had help building the Great Pyramids, along with all other cultures throughout the world. These higher beings, known as... The Lemurians and Atlanteans began helping civilizations all throughout the world build these about a thousand years before the flood. They did this because the pyramids acted as a time capsule, preserving their teachings of spirituality and their beliefs. Using sacred geometry, laser cutting tech, and anti-gravity, they were able to put up these magnificent structures all over the world. In fact, the Mars rover has even picked up what is believed to be a pyramid on Mars. Here on Earth, though, they were actually built to withstand mega tsunamis and super earthquakes that resulted from the nuclear war between the Lemurians and the Atlanteans. War broke out between the two because Atlanteans wanted to enslave lesser beings, Lemurians did not. In the end, we all lost, especially Mother Earth. They made it though. So after being accepted into the Agartha network, the Lemurians chose Mount Shasta to build their city. Lemurians chose Mount Shasta because California was actually part of its territories pre-war. 
They also understood that these areas of California would survive the cataclysms. And Mount Shasta had already been considered a place of great sacredness on the planet. In order to make it habitable, the Lemurians had to reroute the lava caves so Mount Shasta would never erupt again.